Yeah. And his name is Student Minister Landon Muhammad. I thank you all so oh, much. Yeah. But why did he come? Who did he come for? Come on, come on. See, that's where it gets tricky for a Negro. It makes perfect sense for a black man, but it gets tricky for a Negro. He came for you. Yes, he uh -oh. did. See, now y'all ready to leave now. He talking about God came for a nigga. He didn't come for a nigga. He came for the Asiatic black man, your nature. Yes, the Asiatic black woman, your nature. Not what this devil that made you into. He made, he came to get you and bring you back to your nation. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. I further bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I thank Allah for what Prophet Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, peace be upon him, did 1400 years ago. He revealed the Holy Quran over the span of 23 years. And that revelation set the world on fire in a good way. It set, a, it set in motion so much development, spiritual development, even, even economic development all over the world, the likes of which this world had never seen. However, to my orthodox brothers, to my brothers who think they know something about Islam, mm -hmm. you cannot claim that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is anything less than a messenger. That's right. That's right. If you do, you are calling the Holy Quran, that's the book of the Muslims, you are calling it Allah. That's right. And in turn, you call it Almighty God, Allah, a liar. Why? Because in that Holy Quran, in many places, particularly, if you want to take notes, Surah 10, that's a chapter, verse 47, it says, certainly, come on, certainly, a messenger will be raised in every nation. But then if you go to chapter 14, I got a verse four. Yes, sir. It tells you a little bit about that message. Yes, sir. It tells you that Allah will raise that messenger speaking the language of the people Come on now. that he was raised to raise. Do you yes, understand? Sir. Yes, sir. Prophet Muhammad was a great man. I don't think he spoke English, though. See? Come on now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he didn't speak Ebonics. <laughs> now, he reached his people at a time where they were in the state of what they called Jahaliyyah. Which means a state of ignorance. Yes, sir. We know some about that, don't we? Yes, sir. <laughs> but here in the United States, some of us are just ignorant. <laughs> and ignorant is a different pay grade than ignorance. <laughs> That's taking ignorance to a whole nother level. <laughs> when you ignorant, do you understand? <laughs> See, I'm looking at the smartest people in Los Angeles right now. Yes, sir. None of y'all are ignorant. Because let, let me tell you the difference between ignorant and ignorant. Can we have class for a yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Class, sir. Yes, sir. See, ignorance means to just not know. Yes, sir. You don't know. You don't know the square mileage of the earth. You don't know, you know, how to turn how, how to turn the ignition on your car. You don't know how to ride a bike. You just don't know. Nobody ever taught you. But when you ignorant, every time somebody try to come and teach you something, mm. someone invites you to some knowledge, or even if you already know something, you say, ah, man, I ain't got time. See, that's it. That's it. That's right. That's right. So I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger, but let me be very specific. I'm speaking of none other than the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Let's give him a round of applause. Now, wait a minute. There's a, there's a mathematical problem here. A little bit of a mathematical problem. Now y'all can probably look at me and tell, you know, I'm, I'm 
I may not be the oldest brother you ever seen before. I'm a little <laughs> older than I look. But Prophet Muhammad, or should I say the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, he departed several years before I was even born. So I cannot be up here telling you about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Some don't add up. <laughs> Master Far Muhammad, God in the person, the one that came for you. He departed several decades before I was even born, before I was even thought of. Well, I was even in a twinkle in my mama's eye, and she was a twinkle in her mama's eye, and mama's 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 mama. So, something don't add up. Mm -hmm. I'ma tell you how I can speak so confidently about those two men. Because there's a man in our midst today. That's how you do it. There's a man in our midst today. That part right there. Yeah. Yeah. By the name of the honorable Mr. Louis Clark. Yeah. And I know the value Master Farah Muhammad, and I know the value of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad because I see it in that man, and he yes, sees sir. it in you. Yes, sir. And in those three great names, I greet you in the words of peace of Ice Salam Alaikum. Wow. 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 Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> smarter than everybody else in Los Angeles right now. Now, some of y'all who may be here for the first time, or may be hearing this kind of message for the first time, some of the stuff I've said, and Sister Nisa said, and Brother Student Minister Merlin said, might come off like, man, this kind of sound like uh, black supremacy. Mm. Why not? That's, that's, that's kind of racist. Joke. Stop calling something black supremacy, people. <laughs> Because you don't know what it looks like. Come on. <laughs> you was born about 6,000 years too young to really know what black supremacy looks like. You don't know what it looks like. See, what you know today is white privilege and black inferiority. Yes, sir. Let me give you an example. Tell me about it. It's, it's a fictional example of, right. of, of black inferiority and white privilege. Yeah, I, I promise this has never happened ever in the, in the annals of history. An example of this would be a brother chilling in his apartment, going about his business, and then a white female police officer just walks in. That's what she says, just walks in and kills him in cold blood. This has never happened before, by the way. This is something I thought of in my own <laughs> And then when they give her, when they sentence her to 15 minutes in prison. The brother's whole family wants to hug her. The bailiff wants to caress her head. The judge wants to come down and give her a hug and a gift. You know, they used to call it when you went to, to trial and, and they hit you with a football number. That's other words, they hit you with a hard sentence. They call that throwing the book at you. Is that what they used to call it? This judge, a sister, oh, it pains me to even say that. She stepped down, gave this uh, demon a hug, and handed her a book, mm. the Bible. Mm. That's an example of white privilege See. and black inferiority. Come on now. That even when they have our blood on their hands, mm. we look at them as innocent and mm -hmm. deserving of some type of uh, <laughs> mercy. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So that's what we're looking at in this world today. So when you hear us up here teaching about the black God, I'm gonna say that again, that sick some of y'all up. So brother over here flinched, I ain't gonna say which one. Yeah, he flinched like I swung at But I'm gonna say it again, the black God. When I teach you, or anyone teaches you about that, understand that it's not black supremacy. It's just black truth. True. It's just black truth. And you don't know what black supremacy Come is on. because you have never seen it before. But if you keep, if you keep coming to Muhammad Mas number 27, you keep listening to this man and watching the best of his students, yes, sir. Yeah. like our Western Regional Student Minister Abu Mahdi yeah. Saeed Muhammad, yeah. you might see a little bit of black supremacy. If you understand. But you know, people say, well, you know, they they forgave her because black folks. We just have such a big heart. 
times. We just, you know, we just got love in our heart. We, we, we love everybody. You know what we say? Everybody. Well, like they used to say on the Morris show, the lie detector test determined that was a lie. <laughs> no, because the best lie detector in the world is knowing truth. That's the best lie detector. And if you know the truth about us and our current condition, not our nature, but our condition, yes, sir. you know that we actually do love and forgive everybody except for ourselves. That's right. <laughs> I said, Come on now. Somebody in here, I, I don't have ESPN or ESP, whatever they call it, but somebody <laughs> in here is mad with another brother or sister, probably over $20. Right now, right now, you sitting here, and you only hearing like half of what I'm saying because you're still thinking about that $20. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you that they're gonna pay me that $20 today. I ain't gonna ever talk to him again. I, if I Real. see her, I ain't giving her the greetings no more. That's, 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 that's the truth. That's how we are. So I'm just saying to our people, if you are the loving people, which you are, you are made in God's image and his likeness. Yes, sir. But keep that same energy with one another. Yes, you sir. understand? Yes, sir. Let me put it like this. Come on. Money. Basically, love and forgiveness works a lot like money. Because it's a currency. It's a currency. Meaning that you have to have it for yourselves in order to give it to someone else. Mm. For example, yes, sir. if I wrote anybody in here a check for a million dollars, listen, let me give you some advice. Don't go to the bank with that check. <laughs> Don't go, because this is what the teller's going to do. She's going to take it. She's going to compare the number on that check, the million dollars, to the current balance in my account. <laughs> And if you ain't never been laughed at and you don't like people laughing at you, don't try to cash that check. Because her and everybody that work in that bank is going to laugh you out that bank. Because I don't have a million dollars for myself. Come on now. Therefore, when you take that check to be cash, they're going to laugh you out the bank. And they're going to talk about you for days to come. Man, this sister walked in here. She was all happy. She had a million dollar check and she really thought this brother had a million dollar poor, poor baby. Well, love and forgiveness works the same way. Yes, sir, sir. You have to have it for yourself and for your own before you can give it to anyone else. Yes, sir. So if you love this white man, if you love Becky, brother, if you love Brad, sisters, mm. hey, man, that's okay. That's all right. But if you got a problem with Deontay, mm. if you got a problem with Shaquita, mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. if you got a problem with Carlos, with Juan, you know, with Mr. Ramirez. If you have a problem with the aboriginal people on this earth, you have insufficient funds of love and forgiveness to give to this white man. You can't afford to love this white man today. I'm so sorry. You gotta get your bag. You gotta get your paper up first. You gotta get your, 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 your love for yourself up, your forgiveness up first. And then maybe you can afford to cut a check of love and forgiveness to this white man. Because right. right now you're disrespecting him. Yes, you know you don't have enough love to really love him. He laughs at you when you come in him with all that forgiveness. Go back and watch the video of that court case. Watch the white bailiff as the judge is hugging the little white girl. The white bailiff back there like, Each time, he had to straighten his face. He was like, <clears throat> uh -huh. you good? Each time. Yes, sir. Pay attention to him. They laugh at you in all your love and forgiveness. They laugh at you just like that bank teller would laugh at you. Because they know you don't have it for yourself. Because they know the next trial that that sister is going to be uh, presiding over with some brother that looked like you or some sister that looks like you <laughs> is facing a traffic ticket. Mm -hmm. She's going to go so hard. This traffic ticket, you were supposed to pay this on the 14th. Today's the 17th. I'm taking your license. You're going to get an $800 fee. You got to go to DUI school. No love, but Your Honor, I'm, I'm struggling. I, I don't have a job. I, I'm going this. Uh, okay, you should have thought about that before you, you, you drank that look and you, you spit. Next case, bang the gavel. Don't let you go in there for breaking it in. Don't let you go in there for rape. 
Don't let you go in there for murder. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. She ain't gonna hug you. Mm -hmm. She might take that Bible and throw it upside your head. Mm -hmm. That's what they call it, throwing the book at you. Now the Holy Quran, the book of the Muslims, in Surah 2, Ayat 278, it tells us that we are, it is permissible for us to retaliate when we are wrong. I'm gonna say that again. The Holy Quran, the book of the Muslim, the book of who? The Muslim. Gives us the leeway to retaliate when someone does us wrong. Now, slow down. Some of y'all like, oh yeah, maybe we get to go still on the white boy? Wake us up. Well, they walking around the jungle right now, walking their dogs, yeah. and you know, and, yeah. and, and you ain't did nothing to them to this point, so calm down. You ain't there yet. You, you, you ain't there yet mentally, so you, 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 you really ain't about that life. But it does give us the right to retaliate if we want. It also gives us the right for something called remission. Remission means the cancellation of a debt, meaning that if somebody owes you something, for whatever reason, you can say, you know what, you can keep it. However, however, it calls for what's called blood money. Blood money means it's basically a payoff. I killed your brother, I killed your sister, you forgave me, and you basically said that you're not gonna hold it against me, but according to the Holy Quran, now I gotta pay up. That's right. How many of you have seen those commercials talking about mesothelioma? Raise your hand. That's a actual disease that comes from working around asbestos. And, and, if, and if it's proven that you have that, you can go and sue and get paid for it. Is that right? Right. That's true. Well, it's right. That this is the right and exact time for us to go after reparations. That's right. Because we have something similar to mesothelioma. It's called negrothelioma. It's something that is contracted over years of being around our open enemies. Right. Forgiving them even when they kill us. But at this time, I'm not going to waste any more of your time because we got a brother that's on his way up here who's going to drop something on us so heavy, so heavy, so wise, but most of all, so true. Yes. Something that your white man that you love so much, he's only told you a little bit about. He's told you about it being unidentified, but today we're going to identify it. So at this time, I need you to receive our beloved Western Regional Student Minister Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad. Huh? What a magnificent 
magnificent God. I don't care, brothers and sisters, if you don't even believe in God. This universe came from somewhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? You can be at your wit's ends to the point to where you can say, ain't no God. Then I ask you the question, how did these galaxies get here? What brought them into existence? So we thank Almighty God, Allah. We thank him so much. For as he has created all of this magnificent sun, moon, star, Planets, bees, insects, animal, plant. Out of all of the creations that he has created, there is nothing more precious to Almighty God than the human being. Because everything in creation with the exception of the human being, all other creations cannot get out of the nature in which they are created. They do not have free will. A bee does not have free will. It have to do what bees do. Yes, sir. Bees can't form a gang called Crips. A blood. Huh? That bee, when it's born, is going to leave the hive and go from plant to plant, taking and extracting Nectar and leaving pollen and go back to his hind. Huh? A cow. A cow is going to do what a cow do. A cat is going to do what a cat do. Cats can't form a picket line. Cats can't have a million cat march. Huh? Cats going to do what a cat do. Oh, but the human being. God made us so magnificently that he shared a bit of himself with you. As he has free will, he allows you to have free will. But by your nature, your nature, I'm not talking about your circumstance. The human being's nature longs for its creator. Oh, yeah. Your nature. So much so that even if you don't know God, you'll make up one. Make up one. <laughs> or you'll rationalize why you are like you are in the midst of your nature. So we thank Almighty God, Allah, for he gave to us beautiful prophets. We thank him for Abraham. Why is Abraham so known? Well, Abraham was called the friend of God because Abraham had to deal with some silly people who would look at God's creation, make statues, make stones. And the silly people would start worshiping statues. Stones, idols. Because somebody used their hand and carved out from rocks <laughs> images. And because the human being nature longs to meet God, somebody said these were gods and you can get a fool to do anything. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said to us that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to him, that you can get anybody to follow anything. Somebody can show up downtown among the homeless with a red rock and say, this God, he gonna get some followers. <laughs> There'll be a group of fools following him, humming to the rock. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. All right. Yes. Abraham had to get people back to the right course of God. We thank God for Moses because Moses had a people too that reminds me of Negroes today. You may say, I don't idol worship. Yes, you do. You want to be 
Jay Z. Mm. You want to be Cardi B? Oh. I was at the Taste of Soul yesterday, over 300,000 people, and I'm watching them want to meet somebody, want to be with a star. We're walking through the crowd, and people say, who is that? <laughs> oh, he just, oh. I mean, looking for somebody to worship. Mm -hmm. Come on. God is going to have to destroy that which you worship, which is other than him. I feel sorry for entertainers who start believing that they are God beside God. They're in for a serious fall. I pray that Beyonce don't think that she's a God beside God, but I'm telling you, the way people clamor over them, that's a trial. Go ahead. That's a trial. You got millions of people loving you all over the world. She's got 103 million people following her on Instagram. So I wonder how she act when a peasant mm -hmm. walk up to her. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. good. We thank God for Moses because Moses had to take people who had fallen in love with Egypt. And who had fallen in love with Pharaoh. When Pharaoh challenged Moses. He brought Moses and his enchanters in front of him. And listen at what Trump, I mean Pharaoh said. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> Pharaoh had a God complex. And so do Trump. That's right. That's right. Jesus. Right. You can say what you want about Donald Trump. God allowed that fool to become president. Yes, he did. Come on. Because God was going to use Trump to tear up a country that tore us up. Come Understand on. it. Understand it. Yeah. And Trump is attacking every entity that attacked black leaders. He's tearing up the FBI. He's tearing up the CIA. He's tearing up news, calling it fake news. Yes, sir. Right. It is fake news. Oh, yeah. huh? He's tearing it up. He's got senators and congressmen fighting each other. Yeah. Satan now is casting out Satan. <laughs> and the scriptures say, how then can his kingdom stand? White folks mad at white folks. I'm just standing around saying, oh, yeah, good. Good. <laughs> My white man beat your white man. Oh, really? Go ahead. I got five on my part. Come on, come on. I'm watching Pelosi and I'm watching Trump and she he makes her get out. Come on. You're crazy. She said, No, you're crazy. I'm like, And you sitting back worried about your country. What country? Think about yeah. that. You ain't got yours yet. Yours is on the way. Right. Do it, sir. This one has to go. Has to go. I'm right. sorry, ain't nothing you can do about it. Come on, come on. You can't pray it back, you can't wish it back. That's right. Come on. America will go the way of Sodom and Gomorrah. It will go the way of Rome. It will go the way of Egypt. Because she refused to repent for what she did to black and indigenous people. Yes. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. Moses came to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Listen at what Pharaoh said. How dare you <laughs> to bring another God to my country without my permission. <laughs> huh? Ain't that what happened to you when you come in the nation? Right. How dare you go in the nation? <laughs> Them people crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ain't gonna be able to have no more fun. That's what, they think. That's what, they say. what do you mean, not have no more fun? Mm -hmm. See, when you come in the nation under the teachings and guidance of, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you come into a real lifestyle. That's yes. right. What you got in the streets of LA and in America is not a lifestyle, 
Style is a death style. Yes, yes sir. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually. So when we stop smoking reefer, when we stop snorting cocaine, you say we don't have fun. That ain't fun. No, no sir. That's not getting high, that's getting low. Why would I want to snort something that takes me out of my right mind? Uh, why would I want to smoke something, man, that makes me lose uh, reality? Right. Yes, Sorry, you can't smoke your bills away. No, Come on. You can't smoke your cheating wife and husband away. When you come down from that high, them cheaters is still there. You can't drink your bill away. Soon as you finish getting drunk, putting all that money and liquor, you could have paid your life. Right. <laughs> So when people say, man, you don't have fun no more, I'm having the best fun of my life. Because I'm in my right mind. In fact, I'm getting back to my original mind because everything the white man downloaded into me, I'm having it deleted. Go ahead. Go about you deleted. Downloaded his virus into us. What is his virus? His culture. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> what is his culture? His culture is rooted in lies. Exactly. Huh? That's a fact. Yes, sir. What is his culture? His culture is rooted in lying, stealing, and how to master original people. Yes, Pharaoh said to Moses, How dare you? But Moses looked at Trump. I mean, <laughs> you want it? You want it? Pharaoh. <laughs> Pharaoh had the baddest army around. Moses can say, I came from God, and God told me to tell you, let my people go. But the people that he was telling Pharaoh to let go, they didn't want to let Pharaoh go. Think about that. Come on. You don't want to let America go. You don't want to get away from the club, not the club. Can I take the club? <laughs> we got to get out of here. Oh, can we bring the weed? Come on. Can I bring my mini skirt? Sisters, would you go before God in a bikini? Think about that. Hey, hey, Lord. Brother, would you go before God in your wife beater? Mm. Showing him your muscles? He don't care nothing about your muscles. <laughs> we need a man like Moses. In fact, let me say this. We got a man like that. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. He has been a faithful warner yes. to Reagan, the two yes. Bushes, Clinton, yes. Carter, and Obama, and now this fool. Yes, sir. Go ahead. This man of whom I'm talking about, he is Abraham, Moses, and Jesus personified. Go ahead. I thank God for Jesus. Come on now. We have a man like Jesus. Jesus, unlike Moses, the honorable Elijah Muhammad had to give the nation strong law like Moses gave to his people. But the one following Moses, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, had to get the people into a greater understanding of why the law exists so that it don't have to be enforced on you. You would know what this law would do for your life and you would put it on gladly. Come on. Hmm? What is it that make me 
on another man's wife. Man, think about that. Mm -hmm. Do you think you get away with going in another man's house and having sex with his wife and nobody caught you but you did get caught? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Who caught me? Yeah. The God within yeah. caught you. Yeah. Yeah. See. Every time you see your friend, because it was his wife. Mm -hmm. Don't think about it. Every time you see him, you got to get high. got to get some. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on now. Do you know that inside of you, there's a God, and I don't care how much you try to kill him, <laughs> you cannot destroy him within. Right. You can't drink him away. Yes, you can't smoke him away. Come on, come on. He's right there. Huh? Even from a child, even a child knows the existence of God. I don't care how old they are. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. They can be two years old. They never see nobody steal, but they wake up in the middle of the night, go in the kitchen and steal cookies. Come on. And as soon as you catch them, you turn the light on. What you doing out here now? <laughs> Taught him to lie at two years old. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come on, brother. Say that. See, if they didn't know what they was doing, they would have turned on all the lights and did it right in front of you. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Good point. Wow. Some of you kill me when you do something wrong and you lie about it. I ain't know what I was getting involved with. <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> yes, sir. You got a no good boyfriend or a no good husband. You knew that. Mm -hmm. Come on. You just thought the no good part was going to go away because you showed up. <laughs> <laughs> See, you had a God complex. Mm. I can change it. Mm. I can change it. Oh, you think you can teach her Islam? Come on. Please. Man, I don't know where I'm going. No, you're going in the right direction. Stick it up. Stick it up. I think a lot. Of, That's right. <laughs> That's right. Jesus' job was to operate on the brain, on the mind of the human conscious. Farcon's job is to say. Yes. Farcon, unlike the honorable Elijah Muhammad, but like his father. Had to take the teachings from a forced way until you loving and accepting it on your own. Mm. Come on. Uh, his job was to let you know that the same mind that in the honorable Elijah Muhammad can be in you and I. Uh, That's right. I gotta submit though, I gotta stop lying. Wouldn't it be beautiful if nobody never told another lie? Oh, oh my God. Yes, oh, it got quiet. I like it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many of us in here ain't never told a lie in your life? Wow. So everybody in here that lied. When did you stop? Boy, got quiet again. I, I like this. I like this class. See, I'm in the right place with the right people. But it's time now. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that evil has spread it so far and wide and has increased to such an intensity that even white people are sick of evil. Think about that. The human family is getting sick of it, so God is getting ready to usher in a new world. This one is about to come down. That's a fact. Yes, sir. So, Minister Farrakhan, brothers and sisters, we ain't got time. We got a captain, we got lieutenants, we got investigators, but we ain't got to follow you. Yeah. <laughs> To catch you doing nothing wrong, God is already with you. Ah. <laughs> the scriptures say on that day when you come before God, uh, God will send an angel over to you.
to you. And he will hand you your book, hopefully in your right hand. Boy, but if he give it to you in your left hand, I told the brothers the other night, when I go to the wheel, if I go, the angel try to hand me my book in my left hand, I'm cutting off my left arm to say I ain't got no. <laughs> but all of us struggle is what I'm saying. Who in here don't have a vice? Mm. Oh, I like this vice. <laughs> Everybody in here got a vice. Whether it's through your tongue, your ears, your eyes, or your appetite. When you can master, so if you got a vice and I got a vice, could you say Satan is walking with you? Can you say the devil is walking with you? Yes, That's sir. why we have a lesson that says, why does Muhammad and any Muslim murder the devil? Come on. I, Abdul Malik, I'm trying to murder my devils every day. Come on. How can you have an attribute bestowed upon you and you can't murder your devil? Come on. Teach. That's what keeps me humble. That's right. That's right. That's what keeps me from having a God complex. Yes, I have people coming to me. I'm counseling them. They got the same problem I got. Yes, sir. Mm. <laughs> Think about that. Yes, sir. Brother came to me the other day. I don't know if he was Catholic or what. He started confessing. I said, Brother, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Brother, I have sinned. I just want to lay it all out on the line. I said, For what? Why you laying it all out for me? Re-stimulate me. <laughs> Man, when he got through talking about how he had a drink high with smoking, I wanted to get high after he finished. What <laughs> 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 you mean? Let's go have a drink. Self-righteous people, man. Self-righteous email. Self-righteous preachers who suffer more than the people. Yes, Come on. Come on. Some of us are so sick that we want to get next to people who are teaching as if we God. Right. We struggling like you, man. Come on. Yes, yes. I thank God for the I thank Allah for coming to us, the great Mahdi. You can take it or leave it alone. We've been saying this since 1930 that God came. Go ahead. This is why we know the whole world hate black. Who are you niggas to say God came to you? We are in the condition by which God should come to us. When I read my Bible and I read my Holy Quran, he always show up to people who are in bondage. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. That's right, teach. His spirit always, because he hates slave makers. Yes. He hates oppressors. Yes. Come on. Huh? Yes, so God owe it to the black man, to the brown man, and to the red man. In America, he got to come or he ain't God at all. Good. But he came. Yes, he did. His name is Master Far Muhammad, the great Mahdi of the Muslim world. And when we went to the Muslim world and proclaimed to them through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that the Mahdi came and we taught them about the will. Come on. The leadership in Iran was blown away. Because the Shiite Muslims know that the Mahdi is to come and he should be in a spaceship like crap, a uh, capsule, come on, or contraption. Come on, come on. You know, you and the Muslim world make me sick. Mm. Sometimes. Wake us up. You act so stupid. Come on. That's facts. You want to teach me about the night of power? Come on. Do you want me to believe that Muhammad flew on a camel? Oh. I'm not mad. Maybe it's a metaphor.
for. But if you can believe that a man of Arabia flew on a flying camel in that day, because a camel was almost like a Tesla right. of his right. time. Right. That's right. Yeah. A camel, 1400, wasn't no cars, wasn't no airplanes. A camel in the desert was the best means of traveling. Right. It was the Tesla, it was a Cadillac, it was a Benz of its day. Come on. Yeah. But then me males over in Arabia, they ain't on no camels, they ain't Tesla. Yeah. Right. That's right. <laughs> so when Minister Farrakhan showed up and he said, V, you got to be more like the prophet, he said, you ain't. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> He said, you're trying to make a slave out of me. But those who are under the teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, we are slave proof. You can't make no package out of us. You can't make no slave. I love my brother is mine. But I don't want to be no Arab. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Let the Arab be the Arab. I salute you. But that ain't my culture. I ain't putting on no sandals. You, you, you must grow beard. Man, shut up. <laughs> What's a beard gonna do, bro? Stop it. She's hard, brother. I ain't mad that you got one. Come on. Don't force that on me. Where is that in the Quran? It's not. That part. Boy, I got quiet. Come on. Come on. Yes. So let me greet you all. Yes, sir. The greeting words of peace. We said in our original language, Arabic, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum, oh, sir. How y'all feeling, brothers? Oh, oh, sir. Sir. First, let me give. Thanks and show my gratitude to a man that every day is manifesting that he's divinely guided yes, Come on. Yes, from Almighty God alone. Right. Let me give thanks to the creator of the heavens and the earth. I don't believe anymore. There's things that I know. For me, I know. Belief means when you just believe something, you can be absent of knowledge. I know that the black man, the brown man, and the red man in America is the fulfillment of prophecy. I know that. Yes, right. Yes, right. I know that. I know that we are the people in the last day that Jesus talked about to his disciples that the Son of Man was going to show up. He was going to come from the east to the west, yes, seeking to find a people who had lost their name, their language, their culture, and their God. Here we are. Come on. All my life, I don't know about you. I knew that it was more to black people, more to brown people Mom. than what these crap have been telling us. Always do that. My soul knew it, but my consciousness was not being fed by God's word. White man can't feed the God conscience. He can only tap into your devil. Inside of each one of us sitting up in this room is two realities. There's a devil sitting up inside of you, and there's a God sitting up inside of you. And this world activates the devil side. It activates that side to where everything God say do, this world activate to hell with what he say. You can be a faggot. Come on. You can do this. Come on. Brother, lay down with another brother. It's cool. Right. Come on. We got quiet. Sister, you can outman the man. 
Come on. Teach. No, sir. Trump is proving that it's okay to lie. Yeah. Uh, that man tells some good lies. He had me one day. I'm like, Ooh. I was defending him. He ain't lying. Then they fact checked him, and me and him was wrong. <laughs> Tell a lie long enough and strong enough, it becomes the truth. Mm. Think about this. You was raised on lies as a child mm. when you were reading your children books about three little pigs talking. Right. <laughs> Think about that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why didn't you? Put a disclaimer before you talk that to your children. Right. Come on. Three little bears. Come on. You wonder why when you went to the zoo, your child just walked in the bear cage. You may say, that's not a harmful lie. Wait a minute. When is a lie not harmful? Mm. Come on. Oh. Because whenever a lie is present, it murders the truth. Unless you put a disclaimer. You know, like smoke cigarettes and it tells you, go ahead and die. Right. So it says, it causes cancer. It says, warning, die. And your devil, cool. Mm. We're I'll cool. die. We're cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Many of us in this room don't even know it. We are on a path to suicide. Mm. Yes, Think on that. You don't even realize. Think because the devil have made evil fair seeming to you. Oh. Yes, sir. I ain't on no suicide. You eat pork? Come <laughs> on. Jeez. Got quiet up in here again. Sure. <coughs> you on psych meds? Mm. Oh. Smoking weed? Smoking oh. weed. Go ahead. Listen to trap music? Come on. You at the strip club? Come on. Making it rain? I'm here to tell you, by the grace of Almighty God, a lie, that your agreement with hell has to be annulled. It must be. Right. Yes, sir. Mm. So, I wanted to, I was blessed last week to be sitting in the midst of the Apostle God. Come on. Come on. I, I just wish and hope that one day we'll stop waiting till our black leaders die before we pay them respect. Right. Good teaching. I just think it's time for God to just crush us for doing stuff like that. Come on. Dr. King is dead, and the greatest tribute we could have is a damn parade. <laughs> but not fight for what he fought for. He fought for justice. Have we got it yet? Then why a parade? He fought for equality. Are we equal yet? Why are we having a damn parade? Come on. He fought for job. Oh, we ain't got to go there. Uh, <laughs> you ain't got no job. Yeah. Like that boy with Mark. Huh? <laughs> you ain't got no job. Yes, Just building for my subject. Yes, sir. But I saw, in my humble opinion, a concern in the face of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan at his dinner table about 
the followers in the nation of Islam yes, are giving up. Yeah. You know, before Jesus was brought to the cross, come on, come on. Oh, yes. there was a time in Jesus' mission where he was so popular, so loved. Come you on. heard everywhere he went, Hosanna! Hey. Hosanna. Hey. Huh? People would come out by the tens of thousands. Well, tens and hundreds back then. Right, right, right. Jesus never gathered more than 50, 60, 70 people at one time. But back then, that was big. They didn't have no New York City. So the multitude was relevant to the time. But I remember in the early 80s, Everywhere Minister Farrakhan went, you couldn't even get into the Coliseum. You couldn't even get into the forum. In LA alone, we down there had 500 FOI. We down to three. Come on. Wake us up. Wake us up, brother. I remember we was up to 500 MGT. We down to three. And there's another 40 who try to help every now and then. Mm. I'm here to tell you we need to atone. Yes, sir. Everybody in this room. Everybody. That's right. In the nation of Islam. We don't have the right to give up on a man that has no. never given up on us. Likewise. Yes, sir. He pulled me from the road to destroy my people. I was a damn white man detonator. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow, think on that. He pulled me away from womanizing, from selling you drugs, man. He pulled me out of the sea of sin. But yet, I'm running and you and I running after the crap that's in the world. It ain't getting nothing. Come on, Come on brother. You, you, on it. you ain't got nothing. Why you don't come to the mosque? I'm out working. Show me. You still ain't got nothing. You still broke. You still poor. You still raggedy, man. No, no. You sin it. It's hard to come around the mosque when you sin it. True story. True story. And then to get other people to get away so you don't look so bad, you say they keep teaching the same thing. It's boring. Really? Hmm. Hmm. Come on. No, that's you hoping everybody don't come out so you don't look so bad. Hmm. Mm. Teach you good, sir. Teach you good. Ooh. Teach you good. 27. Yes, sir. We have to atone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got your Savior's letter. Okay. Every member of the nation of Islam have to write a letter in the handwriting of God. Come on, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. And in order to write this letter, it takes something special. You got to write it. It's called mimicry. You got to almost write it in the same form. On, same size, same width, right. and you can't trace it. No, yes, sir. Sir. No, no, sir. Sir. no, no, sir. sir. This is why I know potentially, man, we God. Yeah. Go ahead. Because God writes a letter, then he makes you follow me. Mm -hmm. It takes observation. Yes. Come on. Mm -hmm. Then it takes concentration. That's Come on. That's then you have to go to the deep recessitude of your soul and you have to submit to do it. So don't tell me, man, you can't line your mind up with God mind. You've done it before. That's right. Go ahead. That's right. Dear Savior, 
Abdullah, our deliverer, mm -hmm. who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever. I bear witness that there is no God but thee, and that Elijah Muhammad is thy servant and apostle. I desire to reclaim my own. I desire a name from thee. Please give me my original name. My slave name is as follows. Wow. See? How are you going to reclaim your own and you don't come into the manufacturing plant that delete what you became? Come on. Yes, sir. Very good question. I'm tired of coming to class drilling, hearing Brother Captain Halim. See, that's telling me you don't like black leadership. You don't like wow. black authority. You got to drill until you love black authority. Because you're going to prison, and when that white man said you could come out of the cell, you come. Turn left. Damn, banger. You yeah. make that left. You don't have to take it. Turn around, gang member. You Bend over, gang member. Open up, gang member. Oh, oh, Here's a guard. Teach off. Open your mouth. Put your tongue up. Yes, I mean, he degrades you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Teach off. You come around us like you hard. Yes, sir. Mm. Mm. What's <laughs> all that? Uh, see, you putting a three on punk. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. A real killer is humble. Yes, sir. A real fighter, brother, he has humility because he knows he can kill. Right. See, when you see brother being extra hard, they got extra messed up. <laughs> Man, that's right and exact. Go ahead. When you see a brother acting hard, that's a brother who got bullied. Oh, oh geez. Geez. Yes, So he done turned into the thing that did to him. He turned into that too because he saw I allowed a bully to control me and I won't control, so I'm turning into a bully too. Think about it. Mama slapped the taste out of your mouth when you were short when you weren't listening. Mm. You slapping the taste out your children's mouth when they nothing slapped them too far. Come on, come on. At that moment, you was being your mama. Mm. That's right. Uh, that's right. But when you got slapped like that, you said, when I grow up, I ain't gonna do nobody like that. Mm. <laughs> what happened? Mm. What happened? Yes, sir. Oh, man, come on. Mm. 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 Yes, sir. And all the mobs throughout America and the world, we owe it to Minister Farrakhan to atone. Yes, yes sir. Atone. Master Farrakhan, yeah. the honorable boy like him, Muhammad, and to him, starting with me. There's no way this room shouldn't be packed with the dead. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. Right now, it's packed with the dead Muslims. Yes, mm. That's a good start. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Did you get your ex? Oh, oh you got your certificate that's saying you got your ex. Hmm. But have you applied your ex? Because an ex ain't something you just have, an ex is something you become. Oh, yes, sir. Teach. 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 The Honorable Elijah Muhammad became an ex. Malcolm became an ex. Farrakhan became an ex. An ex is a multiplier. Jesus. Because it's receiving its spirit from the multiplication, which is God himself. Don't tell me you can. You can multiply. When you was wicked, you was multiplying. You was multiplying more people to drink liquor with you. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes, You multiplied your dopes. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, to the club, you took them to the strip joint, you multiply 
is it about us that the people see that manifests hypocrisy? I'm telling every Muslim in the nation of Islam at Mosque 27, when you can't bring nobody here, it's because your hypocrisy is manifest. Yes, sir. Somebody on the phone and spread a lie. Come on now. Yes, sir. Man, I'm trying to get to my subject. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Honorable Minister Louis Farcon on his table, he said to us, You think you're a believer? Then take the psalm manifestation of all of your thoughts in the last week. Put it on the table and say to yourself, you don't believe a thing like that. Mm -hmm. wow. When you was thinking terribly of another sister, another brother, a believer. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. I saw some of the brothers at Taste of Soul yesterday with your shades on. And all of them have naked sisters walking around. What was on your mind? Boy, it got wild. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They were putting some extras on their walk. I, I know. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, I'm sorry with me. I watch it. I'm flipping in a flock. Come on now. Speak the truth. I mean, God, he's in it. he works on the aesthetic, man. His mind can't help but to move toward motion. See, yes, sir. Come on now. Speak the truth. <laughs> But I can watch motion, but the, the critical part is, what was my thinking while I was watching the yes, motion? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good question. Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. I got to be honest, man. Yes, you got to be honest. Yes, sir. That's right. We ain't right yet, but we getting there. Yes, sir. And then the minister say, it's okay, brother, because if you can think and be critical of yourself, you're going to be all right. But if we think be critical of you, Yes, sir. Be the truth. Mm -hmm. See, the truth. I don't want to be no hypocrite. I need much correction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I got to practice my Islam daily. Yes, sir. daily. Huh? I got to challenge my weakness. So if I'm weak in the area, I got to go into that area until I flatten that. Yes, sir. Whoa. I got a problem with beautiful women, but take somebody with you. <laughs> Get around beautiful women till they don't look beautiful no more. <laughs> but, <laughs> be strong. <laughs> Sister, you like brother with big muscles and little brains? <laughs> That's a good question, sir. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, you want them to have a nice body but a weak mind. Oh. Ooh. Because you've been trained to be a man. Mm. Oh, Watch out. Uh -oh. Watch out. You've taken on masculinity. Yes, sir. And don't even realize. Realize. Yes, Come on now. Yes, speak That's the truth. why the honorable boy Elijah Muhammad gave the sisters a class on femininity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Femininity is the highest form of strength. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Because femininity is the second self of God. He can't create without femininity. Right, right exact, sir. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He said to us, Y'all gonna be all right though. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said we're getting ready to come on the attack. Mm. 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 It's gonna be so fierce <laughs> that the nation possibly will shrink to only four miles. Trump and the rulers of this
this world hates, I got to be honest, I'm going to tell you what they really hate. They hate the nation of Islam. They don't hate the Islam in the East. Yes, sir. They got them under control. Yes, sir. See? See? As ragged as you say we look in the nation, we may not have no beautiful cathedral. We don't have the supermarkets yet. We don't have the grocery stores yet. We don't have the farms like we're going to have yet. Come on. Why would God give that to us and we ain't purified yet? Yeah, good, question. good question, sir. We had it once and it proved we were not purified. So when the messenger left, we let it all go. And went back to being slaves. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why we ain't got no businesses? Why we ain't got kids? Because you're an adulterer. See? <laughs> you're a fornicator. See? Speak the truth. You a liar. You a cheat. We steal. And we dress it up with a suit and bow tie and a headpiece. Yes, Teach, brother. But we don't manifest it in our life. You are not a Muslim when you're at the mosque. You a Muslim when ain't nobody looking. That's who you really are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, when you take off that bow tie, who do you become? Mm. 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 When you take off that headpiece? All right. Yes, sir. Speak the truth, man. I'm only saying that. Four months, he named it. Oh, man. New York, Chicago, Atlanta, and Los Angeles. That's it. How is it that LA going to stand? It's a good question. It's because God. That's right. right. His spirit is going to come in the mosque and he cleaning it up. Years ago, the minister said, Brother, that's a hard. I'm sending one of my best ministers to my worst spot. Come on now. Mm. Yes, <laughs> he said, I'm sending you to a city of masquerade. Yes, Come sir. on, I'm going to no joke. Mm. He said, They have a sneaky way of breaking the law. Mm. <laughs> they break the law, they didn't try to do it right. Mm. <laughs> oh. Well, Courtney, didn't nobody know you was Courtney. You got pregnant. Mm. <laughs> now you go get married. Yeah. But it wasn't on the basis of love. It was on the basis of being wrong oh. and not being figured out. Yes, oh. Watch out, brother. Mm. I'm trying to get this subject right here. That is the time that what must be done, sir. We got to get right. That is the time that what must be done. My brother was with me, right? Yes, sir. Sitting at the minister's dinner table, man. I couldn't stop crying. Because I'm letting him down. Yes, sir. And so are you. Yes, sir. That's right. We're judging each other now. Stop it already. We won't forgive. It's so hateful. We, how could you pray to a lot of something you can't give to others? Right. Wow. That's a good question. Yeah. Oh, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I ain't forgiving that. That nigga been like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> He said, so I got to go. The minister said, because the long that I'm on, the more I'm around you, the longer it's going to take for you to manifest your greatness. Wow. He said, y'all are using me as a crutch. 
See, speak the truth. You're sitting around watching me play this game called the mission. Whoa. Which is the resurrection of the dead. And I don't miss in my assignment. Give me a roster. I'm going to raise the dead. Mm. And all I ask you is to bring them. You ain't even got to raise them. Yes, talk. Not me. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Speak the truth. Why don't you do it? Mm. Yes, sir. Come on. That's why wow. I need it so long. Because you did. Yes, right. sir. Yes, sir. That is what it is. Yeah. Speak the truth. I ain't got no energy. Yes, sir. Wow. Speak the truth. Come on now. Your bars is like on a half over mm. of your spirit. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do I plug into? Study guys. Come on now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Plug into the study guys. It's called self improvement. That's yes, what sir. it's called. What do I plug into? He said, any believer that only makes one meeting a month, I want them investigated. Yes, mm -hmm. That's true. Man, I, this is heavy. It's heavy. You need it. He said, any sisters and brothers that don't go to their class is an enemy. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Every mosque can study mm -hmm. They are manifesting that they hate Islam. That's the truth. You can take that and leave it alone. That's a class set up for you, and you don't come. Mm. And you want mercy, really? When instructions are being given in that class, you don't like the vessels that is coming out of. What you want, an angel? So my subject today. Black talk about me. I don't come to my class like I should. Uh, come on now. Oh, that's gonna change. Mm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Lead by example. Yes, sir. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about I'll do matter. Yes, sir. Me. Because right. if I can open me up, I'll let you open yourself up. Cause I know what I'm sitting with. You need to find out who you sitting with. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Huh? So I thank Allah. The minister said, brothers, when y'all return back to your cities, please give the believers the greetings from me. Allah well, salam alaykum. Allah salam alaykum. Please return the greetings to the honorable Mr. Louis sir. I shall. Any next? Yes. Believers? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Please don't take what I said negative. Mm -hmm. Wear it. Yes, sir. That's I got to wear it. Yes, sir. The streets are ready for us. Yes. Sure we are. We're not ready for the street. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. I haven't been to a taste of soul in over 12 years. I was blown right. away at the love. In fact, the love was so <laughs> overwhelming, I had to leave. Come on. I'm talking about people coming up to us, homeless people, ankle is being brother. You're the only thing we got. We had some of the gang members with us, man. They were so proud. And yeah. even some lesbians came up and got in line with the brothers. See. They were so impressed. Oh, yes, sir. 20-year-old, when we were cleaning up the street, was like, man, that's the nation. Yes, then we love. I'm like, wow, what's wrong with us in the mosque? Mm. Hey, Show me that the mosque is really out there. Shake them on out. Shake them Bushwise has gotten caught up in this thing. You got to love our people. Our people is in a terrible condition. Yes, they yes, funky. Yes, they got ugly spirits. Yes, yes, they on a road to self-destruction. Yes, but when you show up, you yes, give them hope. Yes, yes,
They do. Pride turned into my heart. Yes, yes sir. They do. But out of 300,000 people, we couldn't get 10. See? Mm. It's true. Mm. <coughs> they say the man's mind. Because our minds were on the resurrection. He was on work to get some money. See? Oh, See? Which we could have did both. That's yes, right. Sir. On it. Sir. Your mind yes, stayed sir. on it. That's right. But it's going to be all right. Yes, sir. Yeah, we got to do better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But it's going to be all right. Yes, sir. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, one day you're going to wake up and the people are going to be lined up outside the box. That's okay. mm -hmm. Whether you ready or not. Right. And I'm getting ready to tell you what's about to happen. It's beginning to happen. Yes, sir. The whole east side of L.A., Bloods and Crips and the Mexicans are now waking up yeah. and coming together.
got mad when the judge gave that little white girl, the police officer, a break. See? Right. Girl, come on. That little dude, the brother said, Can I hug her? See, you got a heart like God. Yes, sir. But it's sick. Mm. Huh? Come on. I ain't never seen a white judge get off the bench with a Bible to hand to a sinner who had murdered some white people. Come on, Come on now. No point. Did you? No, never sir. seen. No, sir. I ain't never seen a judge who took a black man who broke into a white woman's house and killed her and her children and reduced the sentence and then hugged them. Only you. I tell black preachers, don't tell me to turn the other cheek. Say that to the skinhead. Yes, sir. See? Say that to Bush. When the Twin Towers in New York got bombed, why didn't America say, turn the other cheek? See, see, good question. No, you went to the Old Testament. Come on now. You know said an eye for an eye. Yes, sir. Right. But when it come to uh, us doing the eye for an eye on you, you take us to the New Testament. Did you hear the preachers in Fort Worth? When the sister who just got murdered, Christian preachers now are calling for the murder of police officers who kill our people. Come on, I heard that. Yeah. That's enough. I said, uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Yes, sir. Brothers and sisters, the only thing a bully respects is another bully who he thinks he can handle. Black people, brown people, red people, stop trying to love white people into justice. Look at what your love have got you. There's another side of love called rebuke. Rebuke Rebuke them. Well, I can't rebuke white people. Why can't you? They're your children. They came from us. They only been on the planet for 6,000 years. Didn't the scripture tell children, honor your mother and your father? Yes, sir. So that your days may be longer than the earth. Yes, sir. I saw an elderly white man the other day. And he said, sir, how are you? I said, fine, my son. He looked at me. He said, I'm older than you. I said, No, you're not. <laughs> he said, When were you born? I said, Well, when were you born? I was born in 1931. Whoa. Yeah, you're a baby. When were you born? I said, I was born 76 trillion years ago. Uh -oh. Oh, we. Oh, we. Good. 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 If you wouldn't have did it without him, you wouldn't have came back.
back to the mouth. See, wow. come on now. Yes, sir. True that. He just sitting there waiting. <laughs> 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 what you doing, brother? Got my own business. Uh -huh. You got your own business, but yet you don't schedule your time around the mahogany. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you a boss? Mm -hmm. yeah. You better. See. I drive Uber, good. And when it's mosque meeting time, and it's four people in your car, you bring them to the mosque. <laughs> 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 like, you doing? Hey, it's mosque time. You, <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of Take this flight. You ever heard of any from out there? Come on, with that. Yes, sir. Yeah. Nice. So, <laughs> so ease your pain. Easy. Nobody trying to throw off on you because LA about to take off. Yes, sir. Oh, sir. So, real quick, in the next three to four weeks, it is now time that the black, brown, and red community, and even Caucasians, learn about something that is a phenomenon to them. But it has been known by us yes, sir. Yes, sir. since the early 1930s. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. There is a lecture series that those of you that are listening to this lecture on Facebook Live around the world, go to YouTube, pull up the time and what must be done. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan did a 50-some week lecture series. But in week 51, he began to teach on the manifestation of what Caucasians in this government, which are holding the files above top secret, call UFOs, unidentified flying objects. In 1989, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan went before the world with the threat of people saying he's crazy, he's a lunatic, he done lost his mind. When he announced to the world that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad brought him to the wheel and spoke to him. Yes, sir. Washington, D.C. And the powerful white people did not make mockery. That's right. No. Still don't. You know what they said? Oh my God. He knows. He knows. Yes, sir. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you we got backup. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm a little frightened to teach it. Yeah. A little timid. But I've been wanting to teach it for a while. Yes, sir. And I was inspired after Dr. Ava Muhammad came and taught on separation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. And when she taught that subject on separation in my inbox, I'm hearing from the children of Israel saying the same thing them weak people in Egypt were saying. Mm. Why would Moses take us to another land? We don't have no army if Pharaoh decide to come and get us. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Come on now. See, you're a godless people. Right. Okay. So we've been teaching on this thing on a subject called the wheel. The white man know that what he calls UFOs are not UFOs. That's right. I'm going to be going into this over the week. We're going to show you when the FBI arrested the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they took the writings of they Master Farad Muhammad yes. that had the dimensions of the wheel. Good. Yes, they oh. It's not some extraterrestrial being yes, coming from outer space. Right. That wheel came up from the earth. That's oh. Oh. Go ahead, Go ahead Come on. Teach. That's right. See, the white man, he gives you a little sign that is something more intelligent than him. You saw the movie Black Panther. That was yeah. an area called Wakanda. Mom, Wakanda. Mom. Wakanda. Right? Yes. Uh, but the 
colonizers didn't know where it was. Think about it. Think about it. Right here, man. Right. Them spaceships were going in and out of Wakanda. What did he know? Did you see the movie called Independence Day? Yes, when Will Smith played in Independence Day? Yeah. Come on, come on. And you saw the wheel over LA? That's real. That happened in 1942. We're right. going into that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. I'm here to tell you they're not extraterrestrial beings. That's right. They are Muslims. Yes, sir. All right. Come on. Yes, sir. And the engineer and the architect, this magnificent structure called the wheel, UFOs, it is a military ship built by Master Farad Muhammad to attack America. And to attack every European country that has enslaved people of color. Yes, sir. You can take it or leave it alone. Look, I know who I'm talking to. Talking to slaves. Yes, sir. Where your mind has been made by white people not to believe truth. Yes, but I don't want you to believe me. I want you to leave here today as you will and Google it. Right. <laughs> Yes, Either Minister Farrakhan is a fool or it's something that they know he know. Come on now. You want it? You want it? So I'm going to play something real quick. And then we're going to close out. You're going to have to come back. Because this series, we're going to lay it out. We're going to show you whether UFOs and the wheels is in the Bible. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Come on. You don't know how to read. You just pronounce words. You don't even listen right there. Yes, sir. In your face. In the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw the wheel. Yes, sir. He said it was a new Jerusalem. Yeah, right. mm. Coming out of the clouds. Yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. See, we got backup, nation of Islam. Yes. Right. Come on. Come on. If people say, if we separate, we ain't got no army. Shut up. Uh, we do have an army. We got an Air Force, too. Yes, sir. Uh, we got soldiers that's more powerful than the Navy SEAL. All day. There are some black angels, Muslims, original people called death angels. Yes, it's two in every major city. They're more powerful than the whole city. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. They can tune in to the thinking of the people and make you go in any direction they want you to go. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Take it or leave it alone. Yes, sir. You ain't you easy. Ain't nobody tuned in. Well, you do it every now and then. Hmm. Even yes, when you're drunk. Yes, sir. <laughs> you start thinking about somebody and they call you. It's called tuning in. Yes, sir. I mean, Man, sisters, cool. y'all got it real good. Yeah. You start worrying about somebody when you call and you find out <laughs> your worry was manifested because they was having uh, a problem. Yes, sir. Actual yeah. facts. That's right. How did you pick up on that? Love. Mm. Love is a powerful force of telepathy. Mm. Mm. Think about that. Think about that. We're talking about the will. Allah God's calling card. Mm. We got back up. Yes, sir. That's right. Well, y'all ready? Yes, sir. I'm going to go to 1989. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was teaching us about an out of body experience. Yes, sir. He was in Mexico. Brothers and sisters, oh.
How many people in here know that you got a soul? Raise your hand if you know you got a soul. Some of you don't know. Okay. I'm not talking about soul food. <laughs> I'm talking about soul music. Your soul is your essence. Come on, come on. It's that unseen energy and intelligence. That's deep in the recessitude of your mind that needs nurturing. Huh? And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, Our parents used to make us say it in our prayers as a child. Now I lay me down to what? Sleep. I pray the Lord my what? Soul and keep. And if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord what? My soul. He didn't say my body. Soul. Come on, take my soul. Because the body can't go where the soul can travel. I can prove it instantly what I'm talking about. How many people in here have ever been to LAX airport? Raise your hand if you've been to LAX. Put your hand down. Go to LAX. I'm there. Did you get there? Yep. How? Mm. How did you get there and your body didn't move? Exteriorized. How? What did you travel on? What did you move on? You have 57 perceptics teach, teach. in your soul. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said to us, women have this intuition more so than men. Yes, sir. How many of us ever been somewhere and said, damn, I've been here before? Oh, yeah. Come on. Teach, yeah. brother. Yeah. Teach, brother. You said that when you were in the crack house? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you was hallucinating me. That's crack. That wasn't you. That's a hallucination. Just a little jokey joke. <laughs> this subject is so hard, I got to keep you laughing because it's not. We're so dumbified. <laughs> We've been so dumbed down. We can't think on high science because religious religion have made us all victim to ritual, and we don't even know what the ritual is pointing to. Come mm -hmm. on, brother. Right there. You want to just get dipped in some water, been brought up, somebody touch you, and you tripping. <laughs> to go to the tent church with my mom. Well, and she would get us in line and you know they had these preachers, they touch it, everybody started <laughs> Anybody ever been to a tent church and seen that? Where is it? I'm sitting in line, I'm a skeptic like a mug. My mama went and that man touched her and she's shouting and jumping everywhere. She said, I'm help, saved! I'm a better person! I'm sitting there like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> my sister went, touched her, she tripped. It was I was getting closer to my time. I'm getting nervous. My brother when he touched him, he fell off the road. <laughs> I get to the man touched me, I ain't moved. <laughs> he did it again. I like that. <laughs> I'm like, when is something gonna happen? And he told the people to grab me. He did it again. And I ain't doing it. He said, get this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hurry up and got me out of there. I'm going to back like that. <laughs> That's right. Then when I got home, my mama shouting that she said, as soon as we got home, she started drinking liquor again. Mm. Come on. Think about that. I'm like, man, I ain't with none of that. Mm. What am I saying? This man. 1989 said he was brought, it was more than a vision-like experience. Teach, teach. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, all of us, did you sleep last night? Mm -hmm. Do you know when you went to sleep, your soul was in the hand of God? It's a fact. Come on. Teach on the book. God takes your soul while you sleep. 
And if it's time for you to die, if the deaf angels are like saying it's his time, you don't wake back up. That's why in the Islamic world, when we wake up, the first thing we do is say, oh, praise. It's due to Allah. We go straight to our prayer room and thank Allah. He didn't have to give it back to me. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, I don't know about you, but when he takes my soul, he writes on it. And he gives it back. This is some heavy stuff. So I want you to listen because this is going to be the basis of my lecture. So in calling this press conference, I'm calling you because of the serious nature of the announcement that I am about to make. An announcement on which hangs the future of this nation, its leaders, and the people of America. This is not the usual press conference. Though I realize that you may only be able to use a very small portion of what I say if you choose to use it at all. However, I would hope that you record everything that I say, that it may bear a record either for or against you and me. It is written in the book of Ezekiel, when I say unto the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. It is in this spirit that I make this announcement. In a tiny town in Mexico called Tepatzlan, there is a mountain on top of which is the ruins of a temple dedicated to Quetzalcoatl, the Christ figure of Central and South America. A mountain which I've climbed several times. However, on the night of September the 17th, 1985, I was carried up on that mountain in a vision with a few friends of mine. As we reached the top of the mountain, a wheel, or what you call an unidentified flying object, appeared at the side of the mountain and I was called from the wheel to come up into the wheel. Three metal legs appeared from the wheel giving me the impression that it was going to land, but it never came over the mountain. Being somewhat afraid, I called to the members of my party to come with me, but a voice from the wheel spoke saying, not them, just you. I was told to relax, and a beam of light came from the wheel, and I was carried up on this beam of light into the wheel. I sat next to the pilot. However, I could not see him. I could only feel his presence. As the wheel lifted off from the side of the mountain, moving at a terrific speed, I knew I was being transported to the mother wheel or the mother plane which is a human-built planet a half a mile by a half a mile, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us of for over 60 years. The pilot, knowing that I was fearful of seeing this great mechanical object in the sky, maneuvered his craft in such a way that I would not see the mother plane, and then backed quickly into it and docked in a tunnel. I was escorted by the pilot to a door and admitted into a room. 
I shall not bother you with a description of the room, but suffice it to say that at the center of the ceiling was a speaker, and through this speaker, I heard the voice of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad speaking to me as clearly as you hear my voice this morning. He spoke in short, cryptic sentences. And as he spoke, a scroll full of cursive writing rolled down in front of my eyes, but it was a projection of what was being written in my mind. As I attempted to read the cursive writing, which was in English, the scroll disappeared and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad began to speak to me again. He said, and I quote, President Reagan has met with the Joint Chiefs of Staff to plan a war. I want you to hold a press conference in Washington, D.C and announce their plan and say to the world that you got the information from me on the wheel." End quote. He said to me that he would not permit me to see him at that time, but he said that I had one more thing to do and when that one more thing was done, I could come again to the wheel and I would be permitted to see him face to face. He then dismissed me and I entered the small wheel and the pilot, whom I still could not see, moved the craft out of the tunnel and took it up to a terrific height and maneuvered his craft that I might look down upon the mother wheel and I saw a city in the sky. With great speed, it brought me back to earth and dropped me off near Washington where I then proceeded into this city to make the announcement. After I awakened from the vision, it seemed to vanish from my mind. However, on the morning of September the 19th, 1985, a great earthquake struck Mexico City, and it was felt as far away as Tepatzlan, the little town where I was staying. The earthquake brought the vision forcibly to my mind, and I spoke it later that morning for the first time to my wife, Khadija Muhammad, and to sister, Tainera Muhammad, in the city of Cuernavaca in Morales, Mexico. During the vision of 1985, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad did not tell me who the war was planned against or where the war would take place. But as events began to unfold from September, to December of 1985 into January of 1986, it began to dawn on me slowly that that war might be against Muammar Gaddafi and the Libyan Jamahiriya, but I was not completely sure. In early February 1986, I was invited to participate in and be the spokesman at a press conference initiated by the Libyans in cooperation with Kwame Ture of the All-African People's Revolutionary Party and the representatives of approximately 15 groups of blacks, Native Americans, Hispanics, and whites, in essence, to say to the government of America, hands off Libya. While I was speaking at that press conference, the lights of the television cameras in the back of the room brought back the vision of the press conference that I was to hold in Washington, D.C., and I wondered to myself, could this be it? In February 1986, I embarked on a world tour. And while I was in Ghana, in West Africa, it crystallized for me that the war that President Reagan and the Joint Chiefs of Staff had planned was, in fact, against Muammar Gaddafi and the people of Libya, so I decided to alter my planned itinerary to go to Libya and to warn Muammar Gaddafi. I arrived in Libya and practically every member of the Libyan government met me in my suite with the exception of Muammar Gaddafi and his second in command, Jaloud. I spoke to them and they 
went speedily away from my room, I expect they went to see Muammar Gaddafi. But from Tripoli, speaking before the representatives of approximately 80 nations, I repeated this vision publicly, sending back to the United States a warning to President Reagan and then Secretary of State George Schultz. During the confrontation in the Gulf of Sidra between the United States Air Force and the Libyan Air Force, it was reported in the press that a bright orange object was seen over the Mediterranean. The wheel was in fact present and it interfered with the highly sensitive electronic equipment of the aircraft carrier that was in the Gulf of Sidra, forcing it to return to Florida for repairs. In 1987, two years later, in the New York Times Sunday Magazine and on the front page of the Atlanta Constitution, the truth of my vision was verified for the headlines of the Atlanta Constitution read, President Reagan planned a war against Libya. In the article which followed, the exact words that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad spoke to me from the wheel were found. That the President had met with the Joint Chiefs of Staff and planned a war against Libya in the early part of September 1985. I did not realize at that time when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that I had one more thing to do, that that one more thing involved having the actual press conference that I'm holding today and making the actual announcement that I am now fully in the knowledge and understanding of. The reason that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad did not tell me who the President and the Joint Chiefs of Staff had planned the war against was because Muammar Gaddafi, the Muslim revolutionary leader, and the small nation of Libya was only to serve as a sign of an even more significant and consequential event which was to come several years later. I am here to announce today that President Bush has met with his joint chiefs of staff under the direction of General Colin Powell to plan a war against the black people of America, the Nation of Islam, and Louis Farrakhan with particular emphasis on our black youth under the guise of a war against drug sellers, drug users, gangs, and violence. All of this is going on under the heading of extremely urgent national security. The FBI, in preparation for this assault on the black community, has stepped up its campaign against strong black political leadership. The FBI is using dirty tactics under the guise of flushing out corrupt politicians to malign and dis besmirch the good name of many of our strong fighters for justice, threatening them with indictments or casting them into prison. With other weaker leaders, the government has already promised them wealth and nearness to the centers of power and to be in their councils in exchange for their being silent when the actual attack comes. The FBI has been working to destroy the nation of Islam since 1940. As a young Muslim 34 years ago, I recall that agents of the FBI were constantly visiting members of the Nation of Islam trying to frighten us and our families away from our belief in the religion of Islam and away from our desire to follow the leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now it is well documented through the Senate subcommittee hearings on the counterintelligence program of the United States government under J. Edgar Hoover and through information that we have received under the Freedom of Information Act, 
that the government of the United States, the Justice Department, and the FBI, in the name of fighting communism, and in the name of preventing a messiah from rising among black people who would unite us, and in the name of protecting the existing social and political order, use taxpayers' dollars to employ every dirty trick that was ever used in overthrowing foreign governments deemed to be the enemies of the United States, to overthrow and to undermine all black leaders and black organizations in the United States. It is well documented that the FBI, using taxpayers' dollars, conducted illegal surveillance, wiretaps, and mischievous machinations against black leadership to discredit, undermine, embarrass, and even kill those leaders who stood up to amend the condition that 310 years of chattel slavery and 100 years of free slavery produced. That which the FBI has done against the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Nation of Islam, black leaders and black organizations, again, is well done. show you everything he said the government number one has admitted come on that's 1989 that's before three strikes that's before the crack epidemic come on come on I'm gonna show you since that speech that they have done exactly what Allah gave him on the wheel. That's right. And the attack is the nation of Islam. Yes, sir. Right. And I want to say to the believers, yes, sir. we have to be careful because they're going to tap into some of your raw emotions. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on. Wake us up. They're trying all kind of dirty tricks yes, sir. to trap some of us, to make yes, us look like we some kind of rogue group. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't care how many Muslims in the nation this devil arrests, they'll never turn me against the teachers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Not that we are straight. Some of us may have a foot breaking the law and a foot in the mobs. But the foot that's breaking the law is going to get broke off. Right. right. But I'm never nobody's judge. Thus, by the grace of God, that go me. So, I want to play a two-minute clip, and we're done. And I want to show you what happened right after. He talked about the wheel, the UFO, right? I know, it came from a black man, so it's hard for you to believe. So watch this two-minute clip. Come on, now.
appearance, the lights were described as moving rapidly and creating no sound. Those investigating those. <clears throat> what else did the paper cut the color record? What what caused that? Well, it could of course be a paper trail from an airplane, and I'm sure somebody would claim it's a UFO, but uh, I would not say it's that. You should turn to that as the last ah, possible okay. explanation, and I suspect that uh, others can come up with a good explanation in meteorology. <laughs> Well, there were two separate incidents tonight when we saw had nothing to do with last night. Hundreds of millions of dollars to identify just what and just who is in outer space. They had watch parties all over the county, and every night out on the county road, we had energy people out here concerning Washington. Despite the skeptics and official denial, there are more and more sightings of UFOs. And with the help of sophisticated new instruments, more and more evidence confirming those sightings. I don't care how much degree you have, you can't defeat what I have. All you can do is bear me witness. <laughs> the video was a little distorted, but right after the minister warned the government in Washington, D.C., these UFOs were seen all over Washington, D.C. Yes, for the right. next couple of days. Yes, this is why the government never say Farrakhan is a nut. Right. Never. No. I, I mean, if you not. ever at any time wanted to just say, y'all need to get from around this man, why didn't they do it at that time? Right. Yeah, yes, sir. Now listen to this. The videos appearing to show UFOs flying through the air are real. They don't call them UFOs. They call them unidentified aerial phenomena. They, these, uh, the several videos they're talking about were recorded years ago by fighter pilots. Then in 2017, they were made public by the New York Times. We're now from our Randy Kay. Images of that rotating thing captured by U.S. Navy aircraft. Sensors locking in on the target. Commander David Fravor saw it firsthand during a training mission, describing it like a 40-foot-long tic-tac, maneuvering rapidly and changing direction. And as we both looked out the right side of our airplane, we saw a disturbance in the water and a white object oblong pointing north. The object was first sighted in 2004, then similar objects again in 2015. Footage of the sightings, declassified by the military, weren't made public until December 2017 by the New York Times and a group that researches UFOs. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the SA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. It's 120 knots to the west. Oh, This was extremely abrupt, like a ping pong ball bouncing off the wall. The ability to hover over the water and then start a vertical climb from basically zero up towards about 12,000 feet and then accelerate in less than two seconds and disappear is something I had never seen in my life. The Navy says it still doesn't know what the objects are and officials aren't speculating. A Navy spokesman simply confirming to CNN, the objects seen in the various clips are unidentified aerial phenomena or UAPs. The UFO reports were first investigated by a secret $22 million program, part of the Defense Department budget that investigated reports of UFOs. The program has since been shut down, but it was run by a military intelligence official who told CNN they found compelling evidence that we, quote, may not be alone. Yeah. Randy Kay, CNN, New York. Think about that. Now, our government have now brought the Navy pilots before Congress. Yes, sir. Come on because now our government seems to be in line with releasing all the secret files that what Elijah Muhammad taught that was made mockery of That's right. is real. That's right. I'm here to tell you that those UFOs, wheels, Go ahead. is in Go ahead. line with the Honorable Minister Lewis Park. Yes, sir. You can take your leave of government, he said, as soon as you touch me yeah, that's what he said. and arrest me, they will go into action. Yes, sir. Oh, sir. Sir. 
Say that. That's exactly what he said. Teach. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna have to guess. He said they will be seen over the major cities. So I'm telling you, homies, don't trip one day. You see them, don't shoot at them. Don't you be no damn fool. <laughs> <laughs> when you see the wheels, just give them the greeting. Uh, go ahead. Sure. Salam alaikum. <laughs> These planes are seen over military installations where they have nuclear weapons. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. The intelligence on these wheels are so powerful that even if they press the button, they can shut it down. Mm. I close with this scripture. And we'll go into more scriptures next week. In the book of Exodus, in the book of what? Exodus. In the 13th chapter, this actually was prophesied to be fulfilled. This did not happen during Moses' time. Come on. Go ahead. This happens in this dispensation of time on a modern day Moses where it reads, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, in the day the wheels, it looks like a cloud. But at night, it looks like a pillar of fire. And when you come in the next few weeks, we're gonna show you where in Phoenix, Arizona, it was so many. Go ahead, sir. Hundreds of thousands of people saw it. And when you see the video clip that are now being released, yes, sir. And before you call us a nut, I'm on. gonna bring three presidents who's gonna admit that these UFOs are there. Come on, come on. But you're gonna have to come back next week. And you're gonna have to bring somebody. Bring somebody. That's right. Bring somebody. You come by yourself, bring it in. No, we gotta go into this. You can take it or leave it alone. You can say we crazy. But before you get it out of your mouth good, I believe that God is gonna now prove that he's with this man called Far. Go ahead. God ain't no school. He ain't no spirit. No sir. In the next coming weeks, I'm going to talk to you about how the wheel was built right outside of Japan. Come on. Come on. Uh -huh. They assembled it and it went up in 1929 when the stock market crashed. Uh -huh. Then we're going to bring you to the Battle of LA where a United States general admitted that they went after the UFOs and the UFOs pumped them. That's a fact. Look it up. They shot over 1,400 rounds at these wheels in 1942 when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was telling them about these wheels. Brothers and sisters, I know, I know you don't think much of yourself. God love you so much that he's going to prove it. So I thank you for listening and I pray that we ain't spook you out. I pray so that you come back next week because this is a class. How you get so yes, sir. Yes. All right? So may Allah bless you. May Allah guide you. Some of you might see the wheels when you leave here today. That's if you ain't high. Right. You come back here and you got high. Talking about you saw something. You was on crack, brother. Now don't ride around looking up for the wheels. Don't get spooky. Tonight, you looking in the sky and you see a helicopter and you think it's a wheel. It's the pole pole. Go ahead. I know it may be some of you in here who've been on the wheel. You've been up ducking. I don't want to hear it. You may have. I'm not going to say you have. No. I love this teachings in the nation. Yes, sir. How many of you would come back next week? Because you, when you see what we are about to line all oh, now, why everybody didn't raise your hand? Come on, come on. But thank you, brothers and sisters, and may Allah bless you and keep you. We'll do part two next week. 
uh, as we greet you in peace, Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam, sir. Now, brothers and sisters, on next week, we're going to show how Bill Clinton and this government, I'm going to bring writings out of Michelle Alexander's book showing you that the prison industrial complex was set up to decimate the black male, and they did it. Brother, they got us. They think we're finished. No, no, we're not done. That they wiped out almost half of the black male population yes, from 1986 to now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm going to show you how they did it with drugs, crack. Yes, sir. Didn't have to crack psychotropic drugs. Now they got meth coming into the hood. Now they got you on their marijuana, not the one you used to grow. Come on. They got you on their marijuana that they have laced it. Yes, sir. Then they done made up a fake law that they legalized it, you not knowing that once you smoke it, it locked you away from being able to get a job. It's legal, but yet you can't have it in your system if you want to get a job. <laughs> they manipulated you, you dummy. You can drink alcohol, you can be on psych meds and get a construction job, but you can't even drive a tractor for smoking weed. <laughs> Ain't that something? That's why they got you on trap music. Now they working on making you gayer and gayer. <laughs> they taking all of our music icons. They even put Pharrell in a dress and on the cover of a magazine. This crap, man. Yes, sir. This is Sodom and Gomorrah. And if God don't destroy America, He owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. May Allah bless you. May Allah keep you because we are about to be saved. Come on, sir. One day we may have to leave America. I, 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 I'm like, thank you, sister. I hope I don't hesitate. You get that call, we gotta go. Don't bring nothing. Damn, leave my Cadillac? <laughs> I had to get one last look. <laughs> Which way, God? This way. I got to leave my low ride? Some of us are going to be rescued out of America through Mexico. Some of us have to go through Canada. Oh, this is coming down. Get a good look at your house in Malibu. Take a look at your phone. Can I bring my iPhone? Now where we going? We going into that in the next weeks. I know y'all don't believe it. Y'all believe in this white man's world. You think his politics gonna be here forever? I don't want nothing to do with his politics. I ain't voting for nobody. For what? Whoever you put in office, if we unite the streets, whoever they put in office is gonna do what we tell them to do. Don't give a damn what part it is. Can you imagine? LA is so united, the black and the brown, that we can tell the mayor, get the police out of here. Yes, yeah. And they leave. Because you don't need them. Why? You got the nation of Islam. You ain't got to get a police department. Brothers and sisters, how many of you believe what you heard today be the truth and good for us as a people? Wow. 
Man, this is a good class. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You believe? Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. Do you have courage? Yes, yes sir. sir. Then if you have courage and if you're brave, how many of you would like to learn more about the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Stand up, stand up, if you're ready to join on. Come on. Don't sit down. In the nation, our conditions were so terrible that God had to separate where men have a class and women have a class, and we both have a role and a duty to close rank to God That's right. so that he can reprogram our mind and get us back into our right consciousness. We in the nation believe that no nation can rise any higher than its woman. Y'all down, hey, we ain't got nothing. That's right. I'm telling you, 70 to 75% of what we teach is for the female. That's right. That's, right. That's right. For when the female is with God, the man can't do nothing but follow. Because mm. right. right. if ain't nothing we do impress you other than being God-like, then that's what we'll be. Right. But if I can impress you with my car or my muscles, <laughs> then I got you. See? And that's what that class is about. Here's my warning. Once you come into the nation, it's like being pregnant. You're in the first trimester of your new experience. So just like God didn't let you know when you was pregnant with your son or your daughter until a certain thing didn't show up, you didn't know before then. Don't go out and tell everybody what you've done until you get rooted enough and get your questions answered. Because the first thing you're going to be tried with is your own demons, because when you leave, you're going to ask yourself, what the hell did I just do? <laughs> See? See, that's the second self. It was the God that stood up. Your devil is going to ask you why. Then when you go among your friends who didn't get your experience, they got a perception of us. They going to show up say you crazy. Right. You did what? You have to wear one of them damn dresses. <laughs> you have to walk 10 steps behind them? Not them. We can't even keep up with them. <laughs> 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 they allow us to be men. They let us just play. Like, look at them, look at them. <laughs> Careful. And I want to just say, don't get disappointed. That's right. Please, That's right. please, please do not look at the sisters and watch them for dependence on your learning the teaching. That's right. 
some of us ain't right. Don't trust everybody that say ISIL on a label. I'm being honest. You want to get this teaching? Read the books of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Listen to the ministers take, then look at us. That's right. That's right. Because you might get disappointed. We got to stop looking at people and then hoping that they impress me enough the way I become some. No. No. Read God's words and become what God wants you to be. And if you don't see it in the sisterhood, you become what you don't see. I just got to be honest. We don't talk about each other. So if any one of these sisters in these garments start gossiping, know that they're not practicing Islam. That's a devil you're listening to. Ooh, it got quiet. <laughs> Sister, so may I shake your hand? And your name? Tawanya? Suwanya. It's an honor to meet you, Sister Suwanya. And you are? Sister Tracy, what an honor. And you are? Sister Patricia, what an honor. And you are? Sister Jamila. I, I know. You from the first resurrection? Yeah, right. 
There you go. <laughs> See? Now, you can't be in the nation, man. You ain't going to these parties. No, none of that. Just work real quiet. So you all can come on Mondays. Monday nights, that brother right there, Brother Marilyn, yes, sir. he teaches the orientation class, and I help him. That's my lead. And you all going to be in his, his squad and my squad. Yes, sir. And I want you to come with all your questions, and we'll do the best we can to answer them, OK? Who's going to take these brothers? See that tall brother right there? Go with that brother. His name is Brother Ezra. He's about 6'5". <laughs> Brothers and sisters, thank you. I'm going to turn the mic over. What? Two people? What? That's right. Man, we're teaching on UFOs and we got two bomber planes. Wow. Brothers and sisters, we have just erected two unidentified flying human beings. <laughs> but they have been identified. We have two new members in the nation of Islam. They both happen to be sisters. They just received their ex. Wow. Is Sister Sandra Thomas here? Come on up, Sister Sandra. She's no longer Sister Sandra Thomas. I get Sister Sandra. She's now Sister Sandra X. Sandra X. Sandra X. Thomas. Stand on your feet and show your love for Sister Sandra X. Thomas. Tapir. another sister I want to come stand next to her and let our sister captain decorate them <clears throat> with a lapel pin that proves that they are alive. Yes, sir. Our next new inductee who used to be known by this world that lies, steal, and cheat. <laughs> and now that she has exodus out of her life, yes, sir. she's a new creature. Huh? She's not identified by the white man's world. She's flying high in the nation of Islam now. Right. My God, where do you hear this last name? Lord have mercy. These people was the second worst devils on the planet. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the most evil white man of the ones in Great Britain. Second in him, a German. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. If I want my sister to hurry up and come up and stand up and get her name, she used to be Sister Shamika Germany. <laughs> Germany can go to hell now. She's Sister Shamika X. Stand up, Sister Shamika X. Join the ranks with your sister. Come on, brother, sister, show your love. Sister Shemika X Germany, Kabir! 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 Now you see, Sister Germany happened to be the fiance of Brother Everett 3X. Yes, sir. And of Brother Everett. Job well done, brother. She know a lot now, so she will be checking you, brother. <laughs> Have a seat, brother Everett. <laughs> you brought her home, brother. You have a star in your crown. Yes, sir. Don't let your star be removed. Yes, sir. By not teaching her and honoring her now in her new life. So she's not identified by you as long as she's evolving in the mind of Allah. And so are you. Yes, sir. May Allah bless you all to grow together. Get out of the fiance stage and go on to marry us. Yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> these, look at these. I remember when y'all first came. Boy, we need to do some before.
before and after pictures. I'm going to go get some pictures of me when I first came to the neighborhood. Man, I had a process, man. My hair was longer than all the sisters in the farm. Came in a Cadillac diamond in the back. Sisters, you are now officially in the nation of Islam. Yes, sir. That X is so powerful that when you look at scripture, it has been used as a symbol that God has touched that person or human beings. Yes. In the book of Exodus, when the curse came over Egypt, the only humans that escaped was those who had an X as a symbol. That's right. Wherever an ex is over a human being, that means God visited them. Yes, sir. So when Egypt had a curse, Moses had to put a, a strike on the upper door post and the two side posts. And if you go to a bowling alley and you knock all 10 balls down, that ex comes up in the symbol of a strike. The three Hebrew boys, when they was in Rome, they were so wise, they would not take on the Romans' name. They would not eat their food. They wouldn't take on their culture. And you know what the wise men said? They are 10 times greater than us. They was in Rome. So the Roman number for 10 is what? X. See? X means I'm an ex-Negro. I'm an ex-liar. I'm an ex-thief. I'm an ex-alcoholic. I'm an ex-whatever I did wrong. I done x it out of my life, and I have a new life. Minister Farrakhan said, brother, every member that get their ex, tell them we took all your sin and put it in a bag and we sent it to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. What you do from the day on will mark how God handled you. May Allah bless you. Y'all look. And when I say look, I'm not talking about how you look physically. I'm talking about how you look and Feel yes. spiritual. Yes. Yes. You're glowing, man. Yes. So I want our sister Catherine to do the honors of putting on the pen of life. Beautiful. Beautiful. Praise you. By the power invested in the student regional laborers of Muhammad Smiles number 27, Sister Shamika X Germany, X Germany, X Germany. You are now a full-fledged member of the Nation of Islam, yes, and you can now exercise your constitutional rights in a new government. Yes, sir. Sister Sandra X, we're now giving the white man back his name, Thomas, back his name, Germany. You are now a full-fledged member of the Nation of Islam. Woo! Welcome to the Nation of Islam. Your fiance? Yes, sir. For how long? Three days. Oh, <laughs> Don't show out. Marriage is a struggle. But it's a beautiful thing when you're both holding on to the same God, because I can check you with my belief. Sisters, don't let nobody bring you down. No nothing, no man, no, nobody should be able to break your spirit. Now, will people make you mad? Yes, break your spirit? No. Because anything that break your spirit, you have made that thing a God. So you might as well pray to them. See, when you get mad, you can get over it. When you get your spirit broke, that's hard to come back from. So may God bless you and protect your spirit. May God angels be among you and go out and get the dead like you never have before. Thank you. May God bless you. Come on, brothers and sisters, put your hands together for our Western Region Minister. I do my East Side Come on, brothers and sisters. As far as I'm saying in the West, y'all, as far as I'm saying in the West, have we been well fed, brothers and sisters? Yes, Have we been well taught, brothers and sisters? Yes, Come on, give our student minister a hand again. Give him a hand.
bring you to the law. We're going to do some announcements here. So please join us during the week on Monday, the FOI and junior FOI class, the men's and boys class starts at 7.30 p.m. And on Wednesdays, we have the study group starting at 8 p.m. We have a special lecture series by student minister Abdul Malik Saeed Muhammad entitled The Nation of Islam Structure and the Restricted Laws. If you haven't been out to hear those lectures, peace brothers and sisters, you're missing out on something, especially registered believers, because we need structure. Isn't that right, brothers and sisters? Praise be to all. And on Friday, we have our study group, study groups from 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m., where we all sit in a circle and we discuss the teachings and self-improvement. Is anybody in here perfect? Everybody got all things all worked out? But then we'll see you Friday night, 7 30, right? Praise be to Allah. Now, also on Sunday, we have our main lecture meetings. Doors open at 10 30 a.m., and the program starts promptly at 11 a.m. And so, brothers and sisters, at this time, we're going to pass, ask the Secretary Department to pass out the receptacles because this is charity time. Charity is actually a pillar of faith for the Muslims. And we're asked to give whatever we can spare in money, but charity isn't just giving. Funds, it's also doing a good deed. It's giving your brothers and sisters a nice greeting, smile. 